the Mariners starting pitching has still been absolutely unreal. Just mm-hmm. knock down lights out, right? Fantastic. Yeah. But you cannot ride that all the way through because those guys only get to pitch five to seven innings per game. Then you bring in a bullpen that is depleted, you know, like yep. loss brash. That's a huge loss. Andres Munoz has not been a lock this season. Ryan Stanek has been good, but he's kind of erratic a little bit. Yeah. Then you've got other guys. So it's like, I don't know if they're going to lock it down today. They might, they might not. I don't know. They could blow this one run lead. Right. Yeah. But the, the real problem this team has is it's offensively anemic. Right. And the problem is that Julio Rodriguez, and don't like, I'm not roasting anybody here. I love Julio, right? For sure. Like, love him. Every If you're new to the show, I'm a big Julio guy. I love Julio. But man, it has been a struggle this year. It's been hard to watch. And they, they've been saying it for two and a half years now. This team goes as Julio goes. Yeah, it's true. He's struggling like this. Everybody else is like, we got to step in and make up for it because Julio's, he's been hitting singles and now he's not hitting anything. Right. And so everybody else kind of presses and then nobody does anything. And then wouldn't you know what the rotten luck on Sunday happened? So they had technically three catchers on the roster for most of the season so far. Right. Obviously, Cal Raleigh. Mm-hmm. Sebi Zavala was the official backup, and then Mitch Garver, who's been the DH, like that's what he's brought in to do with DH, is also a catcher. Well, right. Garver was having a hard time hitting, so like, well, maybe if we get him out in the field, get him, let him play a couple times a week, it'll get the bat going. So they put him behind the plate, the bat's gotten going. Great. Sweet. Turns out Mitch Garver is a better defensive catcher than Sebi Zavala is as well, who's supposed to be defensive first catcher. Okay. So. So now what Mitch do you do? Garver's, you DFA Sebi Zavala, apparently. Right. That's what they did. Okay. Yeah. So now you have Cal Raleigh and Mitch Garver as your catchers and effectively your DHs. On Sunday, Cal Raleigh got the day off from behind the plate, but he DH'd. Mitch Garver was behind the plate, gets hit in the wrist in the second inning, has to come out of the game. So, for those of you who don't know, if you put your DH in the field, you lose the DH. Yep. So now Luis Castillo has to hit oh. in Mitch Garver's spot in the next inning. So this is all that to set up this brig. They gave Luis Castillo a helmet, batting gloves, and a bat. And told him up, sent him up to the plate, clearly told him, don't swing the bat. Just stand there. Just stand there. On a team that is struggling to get hits, to get on base, to move things, to produce runs. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, they out hit the Royals or the Twins this weekend. They out hit mm-hmm. the Twins this weekend. They had more hits. But the Twins got way more runs than they did because they're hitting yeah. the long ball. They were producing runs. Castillo had runners on first and second. I don't think there was even anybody out. The dude came up through the National League, have him drop a bunt for crying out loud exactly I guarantee he knows how to drop a bunt and they showed a graphic he has a 111 batting average over like 279 played uh at bats in his career let the dude drop that's better than zero yeah. he is a big leaguer it is yeah. better than sending him out there and getting a spring training at bat where he doesn't swing the bat or take it off his shoulder dude it's i was absurd. curious have him drop a bunt move the runners over for the next guy I'm yeah. fine with that. Yeah. And heck, Brig, if he tries to bunt on two strikes because he fouls off the first two or can't make contact, I don't care. Who cares? I do not care. You get do lucky. To try to produce some offense and get some momentum. Instead, you waste one of your 27 outs on a team yep. that needs every single one of them. You're right. That has been the frustration is that they go through they're willing to waste at bats when they cannot afford to. Yeah. Now, last week they were winning some more games and they played a little bit more small ball. They laid down some bunts, moved guys over. They even had a squeeze play, had a safety squeeze at one point. Whoa. And I'm like, dude, things are working. Like, this is great. Continue to yeah. do this. And then they stop. And then they send their pitcher up there and have him put the bat on his shoulder. It was funny that as he walked back to the dugout, he did drop an obligatory F bomb just because he struck out. <laughs> 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 and then he Dang laughed it. Because it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but man, that's why the Mariners are in my question mark tier because I don't know who they're going to be. And, and I said before, they need to make an addition by subtraction. There is 
one guy on this team they brought in to help jumpstart the offense, and he has compounded the strikeout problem, and it is Jorge Polanco. They were winning when he was out. They have not been winning since he came back. Ryan Bliss was great. Better defensively, more productive offensively. Sometimes you got to cut bait. Got to eat the contract. It's like $10 million this year. I know that's a lot of money, but how much are you willing to pay to make the playoffs and make a run? When you have this pitching, it's infuriating. Absolutely infuriating right now. 